such an, appre such an appreciation is rendered even more difficult by the presence within this industrious polishing of the surfaces of social life of a peculiar note, a stylistic nuance we will not, I think, expect to, to be there. Being st stylistic and being a, nu a, nu and being a nuance Though an altogether pervasive one, it is very difficult to, to communicate to someone who has not himself experienced it playful theatra, thea, theatrically, thea, theatrically, thea, 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 perhaps hits near it if it is understood that the playfulness is not is not like lighter lighter ted lighter lighter ted but almost grave and the and the tria, tria, tri, tria, tri, triatrically not spontaneous but almost forced Balinese social relations are at once a solemn game and a studied drama this is not clearly Seen, this is not clearly seen in the ritual and what is the same thing, artistic life, much of which it is if in fact but uh, portrayed of and a mold for and a mold for their social life. Daily interaction so is so ritualistic and religious activities to so civic that is that it is difficult to tell where the one leaves off and the other begins. And both are but expression of what is justly, justly Bali's most famous cultural attribute, her artistic genius, the elaborate temple peasants, the grandiloquent operas, equilibris, equili, equilibristic, Ballets and st stilted shadow plays, the cir cir circuitous speech, unapologetic gestures, all these are of a piece. Etiquette is a kind of dance, dance is a kind of ritual, and worship a form of etiquette. Art, religion, and polities all. All exalt the outward, the contrived, the contrived, the well rolled appearance of things. They celebrate the forms, and it is the tireless manipulation of these forms that they call plain that gives to Balinese life its its settled haze of ceremony. The mannered cast of Balinese interpersonal relations, the fusion of right, craft, and courtesy, thus le leads, leads into a recognition of the most fund fundamental and most distinctive quality of their particular brand of social sociality. Its radical aestheticism, social acts, all social acts, are first and foremost designed for to please to please the gods to please the audience to please the other to please the self but to please as beauty pleases but to please as beauty pleases not as virtue please virtue pleases like temple offerings or gamelan concerts acts of courtesy are works of art and as such they demonstrate And, and are mean to demonstrate not re rectitude or what we will call rectitude but sensibility. Now from all this the daily life is markedly ceremonious that this ceremoniousness takes the form of an earnest even sed sedulous kind of playing with public forms that religion, art and etiquette are them 
but differently directed manifestation of an overall cultural fascination with the work it up semblance of things. And that morality here is a consequently aesthetic at base. It is possible to attain a more exact understanding of two of the most marked and most remarked features of the active tone of Balinese life, the importance of the emotion of what has been wrongly called shame in, in, in interpersonal relations and the failure of collective activity, religious, art, artistic, political, economic, to build toward the definable consummations, what has been acute, acutely called it its absence of climax. One of, these, one of these themes, the first, leads directly back toward conceptions of personhood, the other no less directly toward conceptions of time, so securing the vertices of our metaphorical triangle connecting the Balinese behavioral style with the ideational environment in which it moves. The concept of shame, together with it, its moral and emotional causing guilt, has been much discussed in the literature, entire, entire cultures sometimes being destined as shame cultures because of the presumed prominence in the because of the presumed prominence of, of in them of an intense concern with honor, reputation, reputation and the like and the expense of a concern conceived to be dominant in guild cultures with sin, inner world and so forth. The usefulness of such an overall categorization and the complex problems of comparative psychological di dynamics involved aside, it has proven difficult in such studies to divest the term shame of what is after all its most common meaning in English, consciousness of guilt, and so to disconnect it very com completely form of guilt as such. The fact or feeling of having done something reprehensible, usually the, the contrast has been turned, up, turned upon the fact that shame tends to be applied, although actually far from exclusively, to, situation in, to situations in which wrong, wrongdoing is publicly exposed and guilt, though equally far from exclusively to situations in which it is not. Shame is the feeling of disgrace and humiliation which follows upon a transgression found out. Guilt is the feeling of secret badness attended upon the one not or not yet found out. Thus, those, those shame and guilt are not precisely the same thing in our ethical and psychological vocabulary. They are of the same family. The one is a surfacing of the other. The other is a, a concealment of the one. But Balinese shame, or what has been translated as such, lack, has nothing to do with transgressions, exposed or unexposed, acknowledged or hidden, merely imagined or actually performed. This is not to say that Balinese feel neither guilt nor shame, are without either conscience or pride any, any more than they are unaware that time passes or that men are unique individuals. It is to say that neither guilt nor shame is of cardinal importance as effective regulators of their interpersonal conduct. And that lack, which is far in any way and far and way the most important of such regulators, culturally the most intensely emphasized, 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 all therefore not to be translated as shame, but rather to follow out our theatrical image, 
as stage fright. It is neither the sense that one has transgressed, nor the sense of humiliation that follows upon some uncovered transgression, both rather lightly felt and quickly effaced in Bali. That is the con controlling emotion in Balinese face-to-face -face encounters. It is, on the contrary, a diffuse, usually mild, though in certain situations, virtually paralyzing. Nervousness, therefore, nervousness before the prospect and the fact of social inter interaction, a chronic, mostly low-grade worry that one will not be able to bring it off with the required finesse. Whatever is deeper causes, stage fright consists in a fear that for for one of skills of, or self-control or perhaps be by mere accident, an aesthetic illusion will not be maintained that the actor will show through his part and, f and the part does dissolve into the actor. Aesthetic distance collapses the audience and the actor loses sight of Hamlet and gains it uncomfortably for all concerned of bumbling John Smith playfully miscast as the Prince of Denmark. In Bali, the case is the same. If the drama more humble, what is what is feared, feared mildly in most cases, intensely in in a few, is that the public performance is that is etiquette will be will be botched, that the social distance etiquette maintains will conse consequently collapse, and that the personality of the individual will then break through to the break through to dissolve his standardized public identity. When this occurs as as is something as as it something does, our triangle fall apart falls apart. Ceremony, ceremony evaporates. The imme immediacy of the moment is felt with an excruci excruciant excruciant intensity and men become unwilling consociates locked in mutual embar embarrassment as though they had inadvertent inadvertently inar inadvertently inadvertently in intruded upon the another's privacy lack is at once the awareness of of the ever present possibility of such an interpersonal disaster and like stage fright a motivating force toward avoiding it. It is the fear of folks past, rendered only that much more probable prob probable by an elaborated poly polities that keeps social intercourse on its deliberately narrowed rails. It is lack more than anything else that protects Balinese concepts of personhood from the individualizing force of face-to-face -face encounters. Absence of climax, the other, the other outstanding quality of Balinese social behavior is so peculiarly distinctive and so distinct, distinctively, distinctively odd that the only extended descriptions of concrete events could properly evoke it. It amounts to the fact that social activities do not build or are not permitted to build toward definitive consummations. Quarrels appear and disappear. On occasion they even perish, but they hardly ever come to a head. Issues are not sharp, sharp, sharpened for decision. They are blunted and softened in the hope that the mere evolution of circumstances will resolve them. On better yet, that they will simply evaporate. Daily life consists of self-contained monadic encounters in which something, something either happens or does not. An intention is realized or it is not, a task accomplished or not. When the thing doesn't happen, the intention is frustrated. 
the task unaccomplished. The E4 may be made again from the beginning at some other time, or it may simply be abandoned. Artistic performance start, go on, oft, often not often for very extended periods, when one does not attend continually but drift away and back. Shatters for a while, sleeps for a while, watches wrapped for a while, and stop. They are as uncentered as a parade, as directionless as a pigeon, as a pagan. Ritual often seems, as in the temple celebrations, to consist largely of getting ready and cleaning up the heart of the ceremony. The obscenes to the gods come down onto their altars, is deliberately muted to the point where it is something seem it something seems almost an afterthought, a glancing, hesitant confrontation to a, of an anonymous person brought physically very close and kept socially very distant. It is all welcoming and biding very well. Foretaste and aftertaste, with but with but the most ceremonially buffered, ritually insulted sort of cult of actual encounter with the sacred presences themselves. Even in such a dramatically more high heightened ceremony as the Rangda Rangda Barong, fearful witch. Fearful witch and foolish dragon combat ends in a state of complete irresolution. A mystical, metaf metaphysical, fearful witch and foolish dragon combat end in a state of complete irresolution. A mystical, metaphysical, and moral standoff, he leaving everything precisely as it was. And the observer, or anyway, the foreign observer, with the feeling that something decisive was on the verge of happening, but never quite did. In short, events happen like ha happen like holidays; they appear, vanish, and re reappear, each discrete sufficient into un unto itself, a particular manifestation of the fi fixed order of things. Social activities are, are separate performances. They do not march towards some destination, gather towards some de denouement. As time is punctual, so life is. Not orderless, but qualitatively ordered, like the days themselves, into a limited number of established kinds. Balinese social life lacks, lacks climax because it takes place in a motionless present, a vectorless now. Or equally true, Balinese times, time lacks motion because Balinese social life uh, lacks climax. The two imply, in, imply one another, and both together imply and are implied by the Balinese contempora contemporization of person. The perception of fellow men, the experience of history, and the temper of collective life, what has something, what has sometimes been called ethos, are looked together by a definable logic, but the logic is not syllogistic, it, it is social. 